Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, at Terrily Skincare. So a few months ago, I mentioned on one of my Instagram stories, I was like, hey, send your questions to askterrily at gmail.com and I will do a Q&A once a month on my Instagram story. And <laughs> that kind of only lasted for like two months. Um, I really just like got, let me go close my window, hold on. <laughs> All right, so I kind of just got like extremely overwhelmed with the amount of questions I was receiving on my email. Basically, I created the askterrily at gmail.com because I was getting so many Instagram DMs and so many emails on like my business email. And essentially, I need to keep my business email, you know, more empty for business reasons, not just, you know, helping you guys with formulating advice. So that's why <laughs> I'm out of breath now from getting up for some reason. So that's why I ended up creating that new email address. But yeah, like I said, I got extremely overwhelmed with <laughs> the amount of questions I received. It was kind of hard to do the Q and A's in like text format on my story. So today, basically, yeah, what I'm trying to say is today's a Q and A. I definitely will not get to all the messages I receive in my email. My inbox, I honestly have even checked my inbox for, oh my gosh, I, I don't even know the last time I checked it. Yeah, let's go through, answer some questions and hopefully it'll help you guys out. I ran across your video for shampoo bars. And I was hoping to ask you a couple questions. I have made several types using lye, and they all left my hair weighed down and feeling waxy after a couple uses, even with using a vinegar rinse. I saw your other recipe using SCI. Does this formula leave your hair feeling waxy? Would it be considered natural or vegan? Some people do use soap as shampoo, so they'll use a shampoo bar made with lye that's very similar to soap and they'll use it as a shampoo and then do a vinegar rinse. And personally, I don't think using a soap product with lye is good on your hair. One main reason being the pH. Soap has a really high pH. Your hair's pH is basically around the same pH as your skin, 4.5 to 5.5. So it's better to use products that are pH balanced. And there's a, num a number of other reasons why soap isn't good for your hair as much as like using a detergent based shampoo bar. There are some people out there who have great experience with lye based shampoo bars um, with doing vinegar rinses and stuff. And the reason people do use the vinegar rinse is to balance out the pH after using the high pH lye soap. Yeah, to answer your question, Yes, it will be way better on your hair using the shampoo recipe you've seen on my channel with SCI and DL Panthenol. It will be pH balanced and it will feel very similar to a normal like store-bought shampoo. You also asked if it's natural or vegan. I made a video not too long ago about natural. I'll link it down below. Basically, the answer is a very it's not as easy as a yes or no question because there's no legal definition of natural. It just depends on what you consider to be natural. They are very safe to use and better for your hair than lye. So even if they aren't 100% natural, I do highly recommend using them over a lye-based shampoo bar. Are they vegan? Off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure they are vegan. Yeah, I'll link all my shampoo bar videos down below in case you want like a quick way to get to them. I just viewed your whip soap YouTube video and had a few questions. I would like to make a whip soap but would like to use one of my existing fragrances. Is there a generic powder that I can use instead of the pumpkin powder? And can you use liquid fragrances that are safe for cold processed soaps? So you can totally add fragrance oil. Instead of using the Formulator Sample Shop Super Sense Pumpkin, just take that out and then just use fragrance oil in place of that. In regards to the pumpkin powder, the reason I use pumpkin powder in the whip soap is more for like the story to make it more on theme and a seasonal based product. So just take out that pumpkin powder. You don't even need to replace it with a different powder. Just take it out and use water instead. But if you wanna use a different powder that is for cosmetic use, go ahead and totally do that. I'm reaching out to you because I'm trying to create a body scrub. A lot of my products I use have hemp seed oil in them. I was looking at your mermaid body scrub video and I'm trying to figure out how I can formulate to use the hemp seed oil. Okay, so it looks like I used 44.5% almond oil. You can literally just replace the hemp seed oil with almond oil. I came across your hand soap that you made. I wanted to try to do myself, but add some ingredients such as shea butter and beeswax. I'm gonna use this question as an example to help uh, help me out, I guess, in the future. So I have a number of different hand soap recipes on my channel. So if you guys ever send me a question, 
add the link to the formulation like video you're referring to because I have no idea what hand soap video you're referring to. I've done a few of them. Every hand soap I've made on my channel is liquid. So if you're adding shea butter to it, it it should it should work at like one to maybe five percent. You don't want it. To, you don't want to add a whole bunch because then it'll make the hand soap too thick. So if you are adding shea butter, you may need to lower the um, percentage of the thickener I used. Now, if you're making a foaming hand soap, don't use shea butter. It won't work because shea butter, you know, is a butter. It's it's like a solid, so that won't work in like a, a, a foaming hand soap because that needs to be liquid. But for like a hand soap that is like liquid and slightly thickened with something like Crothix or Xanthan gum, then yeah, shea butter would work. As for beeswax, I don't know why you would wanna add beeswax to a hand soap, because there's no really real reason why you would need beeswax in it. What size press and seals are you using for your one ounce jars? So I get this question all the time. You figure out the size you need by whatever the size cap is. Where I buy my one ounce jars, it literally says on the top of the listing, one ounce clear glass straight sided round jar with 43-400 neck finish. So that means the neck is 43-400. And you want to make sure you're buying lids that are 43-400. That's how you know the lid will fit the jar. That means you need to buy 43 millimeter press and seals. That goes for any other bottle or jar you purchase, whatever the neck finishes is the size of the press and seals you need to purchase. I have a question about making foaming soap. Is it okay to just use the foaming soap base with SCI powder and cocoa betaine? So if you didn't know, you can go to like Wholesale Supplies Plus, uh, probably a lot of other websites and buy a foaming soap base already made. And then you can add like oils to it, I think, or like any other things you want to add to it. I'm not exactly sure how it works because I've never used it. But um, basically what I made was a foaming soap base, but I went ahead and already added in the extra ingredients I wanted to add into the formulation. So I made it like homemade. If you're buying foaming soap base, it already has SCI in it. And I don't think it has cocoa betaine in it, but it has an ingredient similar to cocoa betaine, but it does definitely have SCI powder. So no, it probably isn't okay to add the SCI powder and cocoa betaine to foaming soap base because it already has it, it doesn't need it. All you need to add is just water, not water, uh, coloring, fragrance, and oils, or like any other random thing you wanna add to it. But yeah, so basically my video is how to make it homemade, but if you're purchasing foaming soap base, you're not making it homemade. You're just buying like a base and then adding to it. So I'm actually just going to shorten down this question. They are asking what their what the expiration date is for the mermaid body scrub. I have a video all about how to calculate shelf life of products. I'll link it down below. That way you can learn how to do it. And I think this is a good time to mention this. So I don't actually share the shelf lives of the products I make on my channel because I know most people aren't going to follow the recipe to a T. They're going to substitute ingredients and stuff and that can change the shelf life. So I don't like to offer a shelf life. That way you don't use that shelf life for your product because it's different than mine. That's why I always refer everybody to that video of mine to calculate an estimated shelf life for your products. And do keep in mind that that video is just an estimated shelf life. It's not your guaranteed shelf life. The only way you can get a guaranteed shelf life is to have your product sent out to a lab and have them determine your shelf life for you, which is pretty expensive. So that's why I have this alternative. Next question is, will the rejuvenating serum work without the L-Panthenol? I can't seem to find it. Yep, DL Panthenol is fine, you don't need it. So a lot of times you can always take out ingredients from the products I make on my channel. You, The main things you need are like the, the pro, mainly the surfactants and like some of the actives. It really just depends. Like if you're making a whipped soap, yeah, you need the SCI. You can't make it without the SCI unless you re replace it with like a different ingredient that's similar to it. I mean, I've never made foaming soap with a different powdered surfactant. Typically all foaming soaps are made with SCI, so maybe it isn't possible. I've never tried it. You tell me. But um, yeah, so like you need the main ingredients. Like if you're making a face wash and you're like, hey, can I make this without the anionic surfactant, which is the cleansing ingredient? And it's like, no, you can't because 
Those are literally the ingredients that are making the face wash, wash off your skin, <laughs> wash off the dirt and oils and stuff. Or if you're making a moisturizer with emulsifying wax and F and someone's like, hey, can I make this without the emulsifying wax and F? No, you can't because that is literally the emulsifier that makes the product. So if it's like ingredients like strawberry extract, DL panthenol, yeah, you can take those out. The product will still work. Now, maybe if you're making like a niacinamide serum, and someone says, can I make it without the niacinamide? Well, no, because then it's not a niacinamide serum. When it comes to taking ingredients out of a formulation, you just need to think, is this taking this ingredient out going to essentially ruin the product, make it unstable, take away what its purpose is? And a lot of people like earlier asking if they can take the pumpkin powder and the super scents out of the pumpkin whipped soap. It's like, yeah, but then it's not a pumpkin whipped soap. It's just a whipped soap. So when I'm making things that are like, have a story behind them, like a rose face wash, yeah, you can take out the rose hydrosol and the rose fragrance or whatever else that I'm using that is like rosy, but then it's not like a rose face wash. You can maybe like change it out for like strawberry essence water, strawberry extract, and then it's like a strawberry face wash. So a lot of the ingredients that I'll use in products are kind of just for, for like the story. And yeah, they do add benefits to the product sometimes, sometimes they don't. But yeah, it's just like, I don't know, that's just the best way I can explain it. I hope that made sense. Is it okay to use fruit acid complex instead of apple fruit essence? I have no fruit essence on hand, but have tons of the fruit acid complex. By the way, I'm formulating the green apple foaming face wash. Mm -mm, no, fruit acid complex and apple fruit essence are two different ingredients. So um, I'm a little concerned because if you have fruit acid complex, I'm wondering if you understand what it actually is and did you do research on the ingredients? Because, or maybe you just don't know what apple fruit essence is. That could be it too. Um, so. First off, my advice to you just to help with like future issues, um, if you ever have a question like this, so go to the website you ordered fruit acid complex and read what it does. Then go to um, lotioncrafter.com, which is where I purchased the apple fruit essence and read about it. You'll find out that those two ingredients are completely different. Um, the fruit acid complex is, is like an alpha hydroxy acid. It's a combination of a bunch of different fruit extracts, which help exfoli exfoliate the skin. And um, the apple fruit essence is, it's like a hydrosol. Essence waters and hydrosols are very similar. They're basically the same thing. They're just fragranced waters. So they're two completely different things. So they, they can't be replaced for one of another. Um, the apple fruit essence is essentially just in the recipe for the story and for the fragrance of the apple. Um, and then you would use fruit acid complex in another product for the exfoliating ben benefits, which I do have an exfoliating face wash here on my channel with fruit acid complex. And I'll link to that down below in case you want that for help. So if you're trying to figure out what to replace the apple fruit essence with, just use water instead, or you can use a different hydrosol or different essence water, but then your product's not gonna smell like apples. So it's not gonna be like an apple face wash anymore. How do I make my DIY cream to be effective in lightening and moisturizing my skin? So there are all kinds of different like lightening and brightening ingredients. Um, a really popular one is alpha arbutin. I'll link that down below. And are you trying to combat like dark spots? Is that your, is that your concern? Because if that is your concern, alpha hydroxy acids are really good for dark spots as well. So you could do a alpha hydroxy acid moisturizer with like um, glycolic acid or lactic acid or something. Alpha Flora Jigga White is a eco -cert brightening ingredient. So that helps brighten your skin. And also Alpha Arbortin, I would say is probably works better than Alpha Flora Jigga White because Alpha Flora Jigga White is natural and typically natural ingredients aren't as effective as the synthetic ones like Alpha Arbortin. So if you really want like good lightening effects, use Alpha Arbortin. It can be paired with things like glycolic acid and lactic acid, but you need to make sure you're only using the acid at a small percent. Yeah, so if you're mi mixing the alpha arbortin with an exfoliant, like glycolic or lactic acid, don't use the alpha arbortin over 0.2%. Extract that's really good with like lightening and brightening the skin is licorice root extract. Secondly, you want to treat pimples. So if you want to treat pimples, I think that's really um, a person by person case. Everybody's getting acne for different reasons. 
It could be environmental, could be genetic, hormonal, could be the products you're using. It's really, there's a really so many different reasons as to why you're getting acne. So I think you need to sort of figure out why you're getting it first until you figure out how to treat it. Cause you can't really treat something without knowing what's causing it. Now, if we're going with like the generic answer on how to treat acne, it's typically people find results with using um, alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, um, so exfoliating the skin. You want to make sure you're not like clogging your pores. So use non-comedogenic ingredients. You want to stick with high linoleic acid carrier oils. So like safflower oil, hemp seed oil, sunflower seed oil, evening primrose oil. I personally suggest using I don't know, this might be like an unpopular opinion, but I kind of suggest using the least amount of product as possible. I feel like the more product you put in your skin, the more it's gonna clog your pores. So stick with like a simple routine, face wash, toner, moisturizer, you'll be good. If you wanna implement a serum sometimes, that's fine too, but I don't really think it's necessary as long as you're getting like all your actives for fighting acne in your toner, which is essentially the alpha hydroxy acid. And then you could be getting some of the actives from your moisturizer as well. I just think a bunch of layers of product on your skin just isn't necessary. Retinol is also another good ingredient for acne. So maybe if you're older, having more mature skin, you could use retinol or even as a teenager, you can use retinol as well. The only reason I say why you're, if you're older too, is because retinol is great for wrinkles, aging skin as well. But yeah, so I think your first thing you need to do is figure out what's causing the acne. Cause also if it's hormonal, you're not going to be able to fix it with just skincare products. So if it does come down to you thinking it's hormonal, I suggest going to the doctor and they can get you figured out with that there. I used to have to take medicine for my acne when I was in high school. I had horrible, horrible, horrible acne and I actually went to the doctor for it. They prescribed me a pill and um, a cream and oh my gosh, it cleared it up. It was just chef's kiss. It was, it was great after it. So literally, if you cannot figure out what's wrong with your acne, go to the doctor, they will get you the hookup and you'll get your skin all figured out because sometimes products just aren't enough. And then you ask, what is the normal pH of face cream? This is a little bit hard to answer. It really depends. So your skin's pH naturally is 4.5 to 5.5, but that doesn't always mean your product is going to be within that pH range. Because if you are making a moisturizer with alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids, then your product needs to be around like 4.0 to 4.5 for the alpha hydroxy acids to be active and actually work in that product. Or if you're making a niacinamide moisturizer, then you need to have it somewhere around like 5.5 to like maybe 6.5 tops. I would shoot for 6.0. You want around six pH when you're working with niacinamide. So if you're making a moisturizer with like no like actives that are pH sensitive, then you do want to shoot for 4.5 to 5.5, but make sure you are using a preservative that is active within that pH level. So I'm going to answer one more question. So this last email, has four questions. The first one is, I just finished watching your mango body butter video and was just wondering, can I use fragrance oil at the same percentage? Now, I don't exactly remember what percentage I use my mango fragrance oil at, but I assume it's at like one or two percent. And yes, you can use any fragrance oil at the same percentage. Just a disclaimer, just in case, just do make sure you check with the supplier what is the suggested usage rate of that fragrance oil, just in case. But for the most part, most of them are fine to use at like one to two percent. How do I come up with my own formulation slash recipe? Because I took a few classes and it didn't teach me what I thought it would. Any suggestions? My suggestion is for you to watch my formulating for beginner series because I go into detail all about that. It'd be too long to explain here in this video because there's a lot. It's not a simple answer, really. Since I'm new to formulating, do you think it's best to find someone that has experience in formulation for them to help me? I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be best because it would, it'd be awesome to be able to actually, at least, at least me personally, it would have been awesome to like know somebody who knew how to do it. Then I could like go to their house and they could actually show me how to do it because I'm somebody that learns by doing. I can read all about something, but I won't comprehend it until I actually like 
do it and implement it, which I find that to be a common theme with a lot of people who message me asking me questions. They'll be like, I watched this video, but it made no sense. And I'm like, yeah, girl or boy, me too. It made no sense when I first learned about it either. But I kind of just like tried to absorb the information and then I implemented it into my experimenting and formulating. And um, over time, I learned to understand it by practicing it, if, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it would be best for you to find somebody who knows how to do it, but is that possible? Most likely it's not. So um, it's still possible to learn how to formulate without having anybody because I didn't. I just learned from what I found on the internet and I learned how to do it over time. Now this has been like a lot of years of learning and I still don't know a lot. This is Milady Skincare and Cosmetic Ingredients Dictionary. This is pretty informative. There's a lot of other books you could buy on Amazon as well. I'll link to this one down below and a couple other that I think is interesting. You can purchase those to learn. Um, but yeah, and also just with practice, it'll come. It is a lot of work and a lot of fails, but it comes many times you'll want to give up because it's very confusing. But I mean, if it wasn't confusing, then everybody would be making skincare products and it wouldn't be multi-billion dollar industry. All right, fourth question and my last question. Can I use the same recommended preservative percentage in the body butter and sugar scrubs, or do I have to use a different percentage for each one? And if so, how do I determine the percentage? Okay, so you're referring to the mango body butter video. I don't remember what preservative I use in that video. If you're using the same preservative as me, yes, use that the same percentage. If you're using a different preservative, look up the suggested usage rate provided by your supplier so you know what percentage to use the preservative at. I recommend going and watching my Formulating for Beginners series because a lot of these questions um, would be answered in that series because for every preservative, there's always a suggested usage rate provided by the supplier who sells the ingredient. That way you know what percentage to use the preservative at. And that is it, that is the end. Those are all the questions, literally, I didn't even, I didn't even like dip my toes into like all these questions. There are still so many emails I've received from people and I am terribly, terribly, terribly sorry that I will probably never get to these questions. And I apologize for that, but I'm only one person and it's the best I could do. I hope this Q&A was fun for you. Did you like it? Let me know. Do you want me to do more? Let me know down in the comments. Also, a lot of people who come to my channel seem to not know there is a description box to my videos. Sometimes this could be hard to find maybe if you're new to YouTube, but I promise down, if you go below this video, there is a button you can press to open the description. And there are links to everything I mentioned in this video that I referred to that I said I'd link to. Use a description box. I don't know, there's just so many people who've came to my videos and been like, I can't find the links to the ingredients you mentioned. And it's like, really? But then I'm just like, you know what? Maybe they're new to YouTube. Maybe they've never been on YouTube before. Just because I've been on YouTube since I was like in sixth grade doesn't mean everybody else has been. So yeah, there is a description box. It's down there, click it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the Q&A. And let me know if you guys want me to do another one. And follow me on Instagram, at Tara Lee Skincare, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. Stardust Bath & Body, Nature's Farm Girl, Kennedy's Essentials, Let's Blend, Wallflower Wildflower, Heartfelt Beauty, KAJ Bath & Body, Blue Mint Soaps, Salt Air Label, Linny's Beauty, Shark City Naturals, Ohana Lay, Danny Botanicals, Hempy Girl, Brie Maquillage, Alchemy & Clay, Bible Belt Boutique, London Lattress, Naturally Flawless, Beauty by Riza, The Job Spa, Facial Daily Rituals, and Amore Bath & Beauty. I also sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll have my Etsy shop linked down below along with all my lovely patrons. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from. I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision. Now I'm on a mission to find myself with